Many of you asked me about my opinion on Nike stock as it has been struggling a little bit lately. It's sitting at $103 per share. Now, most of you that have been watching my Nike videos, you know that I'm not a big fan of the company. You know that I've been pretty bearish on the stock and I've been wrong on Nike so far as it went on a huge run after I made the video to $120. But after Nike reported earnings, the stock is sitting right now at $103 per share. So in this video, I'm gonna review the numbers of Nike, update you on my own valuation model and try to determine if Nike stock right now is a better buy than it was before or is it a worse buy than it was before and I'm just gonna give you my opinion and update you on the stock in general. Now in terms of earnings themselves they are very encouraging massive beat on EPS per share a dollars and three cents versus 85 cents expected massive massive beat. Margins have been massively improving due to Nike cutting a lot of cost. Gross profit improved five percent despite revenues only going up 1%. This is mainly because the cost of sales went down 2%. So they are managing costs much, much better in terms of net income. Net income is up over 19%. You know, pretty amazing stuff with, uh, you know, just revenues being up 1%. Pretty amazing stuff. I think Nike made a big mistake like many other companies. They increased staffing, increased a lot of things. And I saw that the COVID boom was permanent, but it's likely not permanent. And Nike is trying to reduce costs. They also announced another $2 billion of costs over the next few years. A lot of layoffs and many other things. So I believe Nike, the company itself, is doing the right thing for shareholders, trying to manage costs a little bit better. But the big problem with earnings, this is why the stock went down, is mainly because of their outlook. Their outlook for revenues is only 1% growth, you know, approximately 1% growth compared to the prior outlook, which was in the mid single digits percentage growth. And most people were expecting Nike to have much higher growth because it had much lower growth in the past. This is what Nike had. It had pretty much flat growth from 2017 to 2020 after COVID, a massive, massive run. And then people saw this is a new normal for Nike. Nike is going to be growing 25-30% EPS forever. 2021 was an amazing year. 2022 was an amazing, amazing year. 2023 is a little bit slower. And it looks like 2024 is going to be a little bit slow too before maybe they ultimately grow again. But even before the massive COVID boom, Nike itself hasn't been growing very, very fast. So a lot of people right now are kind of claiming that this is because of the COVID boom and the COVID boom is over and it's mainly because of the economy. Yes, it, it could be because of the economy. I'm sure it has something to do with it. But I think it also has to do something with shifting consumer preferences. A lot of people are trying to buy different shoes, not just Nike shoes. Maybe they don't want to pay up for them. Maybe they want to buy different kind of shoes, maybe Adidas, maybe just try something new. They don't just want to buy Nikes as they wanted to buy them before. I think there's a massive consumer shift. If you're as the market share of Nike, it has been flat since 2018. The same year, revenues were pretty much flat. It's the same with the market share of Nike and the athletic footwear category. This is by Statista.com. You can check it out yourself. In 2018, it was around 27%. It's still 27.4% 20, 20, for 2024, and it's expected to be 27.4% for 2025 and beyond. So the market share is pretty much flat. Nike already concurred the footwear space. There's a lot of competition. I think some uh, people are shifting their preferences. They want something maybe a little bit cheaper or some kind of a different brand. And this is what's mainly happening with Nike. I think the economy has something to do with it, of course, but it's also due to shifting consumer preferences, which a lot of people are not talking about and just a more mature company in general that's not going to keep growing 20 and 15% EPS forever. I would say EPS could grow maybe 8 to 10% maximum. This is what I personally see for Nike. In terms of the balance sheet, it's not bad at all. They have around $10 billion of cash and cash equivalent. Long term, that is $9 billion. So the balance sheet is pretty good. And they have around $2.3 billion. So they can pretty much eliminate the debt. And they have plenty of free cash flow, a very small dividend. So I think Nike is fine in terms of their balance sheet. In terms of my valuation model and my fair value on Nike stock, I put in 1% revenue growth for 2024 as the company itself has guided. They have guided around 7%. In terms of revenue growth, the analysts are expecting around 7% massive rebound for 2025. Then between 7 to you know 5%, 7%. So I just put a basic 7% average growth from 2025 to 2028, which I think most of you can agree with me that this is pretty fair for Nike and it could end up being on the higher end if Nike continues to grow revenues much, much less 
less than it used to be before. In terms of flat income margins, I put them at 10%. They are currently 10%. They might be able to take them up to 11 or 12%, but I kept them at 10%. PE ratio, I put in a PE ratio at 25 times earnings, which in my opinion is a fair multiple. Now, if you look over the last 10 years, you know, something like e uh, price to earnings ratio, forward earnings, were 29 and a half. And now it's around 26 times. I think five years from now, a fair value multiple is 25 times for a slower growing company like Nike. But I can use 20, 29 times in an illustration here very soon. But if I use what I believe is a fair value, which is 25 times earnings maximum for the brand value with such low growth, I would only get 9% upside over the next five years or 1.8% CAGR. And in this case, I would have to buy Nike at $59 per share for me to even get a double or 15% a year. If I want to use something like 30 times earnings, it gets a little bit better. The total return is around you know, 30% upside or 5.4% CAGR over the next five years, which might, it might be good to some people, but, but I know dividend companies that are paying 6 and 7, 8%. I talk about them on YouTube. So for me personally, I'm not try, I'm, I can't justify a valuation for Nike. I just can't. I mean, even if net income margins go to 12%, which is, which is very hard, which is very something I don't imagine at all. If we do, do get 12% net income margin, this is still only 55% on the upside. I would have to buy Nike at $83 to even get a double on the best of the best case scenarios. So for me personally, Nike is massively overvalued. I'm going to continue saying that. It doesn't mean the stock can't go higher. It could go much higher. It could experience many things. Maybe investors love it. It gets multiple expansion to 40 times earnings. I can't predict that. By using pretty fair numbers as a valuation kind of investor, as a fundamental investor, I'm not seeing Nike a buy. I mean, I, I just don't see why I would buy Nike over any other stock that's in the market, unless maybe the entire market was at 6000 and Nike was sitting at $100, I would say maybe. But for me, Nike is just overvalued. I'm not touching it. I could be wrong. And I've been wrong on Nike so far. But this is my opinion on the stock. It was not financial advice. I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another video.